I have some thoughts on Dave Chappelle's latest Netflix special. Just dropped. And it's good. It's good. It's not good old Dave Chappelle, right? It's not Dave Chappelle circa Chappelle show or half-baked Dave Chappelle. It's not Dave Chappelle throwing caution to the wind, being the court jester, making fun of everything in this theater we call life. No, it was more Dave Chappelle groomed for the theater, maybe. A little bit deliberate in his words. A little bit more presentable. Maybe you know where I'm going with this. On top of that, There's also Malcolm X and there's Osho, and I've always wondered, if Malcolm X and Osho had a baby, what could we learn from that baby? What would that baby's name be? Well, we're going to get into that today. Can I really fit that all into 10 minutes? Because I'm trying to do 10 minutes now instead of 15. Probably not, but I'm going to try it anyway. Because when I was in the military, we had this saying, if it don't fit, force it. We couldn't get the leading edge back on because the little hinge pin wouldn't go back into these holes and you kept having to line it up. You would just take this big thing and pound it and smack it and hammer it. If it don't fit, force it. But I've lived by that credo long enough. Now I'm going to live by, if it don't fit, find another hole. Welcome back to Waking Infinity News. I'm your host, Ben Joseph Stewart, and get your head out of the gutter. When I said, find another hole, I was not saying anything innuendo-ish. I was actually talking about how we communicate to one another. And how we communicate to one another is also how we frame what it is that is of importance. What's the priority out there? So if you are a hammer, then every problem might look like a nail requiring some hammer time. But Some things require finesse. Some things require the, if it don't fit, don't force it. Try and find another way. That's really what I'm talking about. If you only use the argumentative tactics, the logic, the facial expressions, tone of voice, and the way of othering other people that the mainstream media uses, you're only going to ever be equipped to make things worse. And that's not what we're trying to do here at Waking Infinity News. We're trying to actually show that the left and the right are not enemies. And in fact, it's just a simple narrative that we've all fallen for, hook, line, and sinker. The left and the right are both beautiful. The ugliness is A, the silly and divisive stories that we choose to fall for. That is the illness. So the real illness on planet Earth is not COVID. It is not COVID. And it is not the unvaccinated, nor is it the vaccinated. It's ignorance and us falling for stupid stories. I'm going to let Osho say it a little better. Because democracy basically means government by the people, of the people, for the people. But the people are retarded, 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 retarded. Osho was a wise, but also a very troubled man. There's a movie about him, and you can see all the troubles that they laid out for you in there. I think he was quite a bit more wise than most people today, especially those who only base what they know off of what they see on Netflix, like they think all of Humboldt County is Murder Mountain when I lived there, and that's one of the most amazing places to live. What I am saying is that most of us are kind of like Osho. We're not fully enlightened like we would like to let others believe we are. And we're not fully full of shit like others would like to make others believe we are. We're kind of a mix of both. We are an enlightened piece of shit. And we don't really know how to express ourselves to people who don't believe already what we believe. We know how to get people on our side who are already looking for what we're giving. But what about the other side? What about building bridges? We're all a little full of shit. And we're all a little incredibly gifted. This is an important point. We need more people that come from a spiritual slant, that come from a mystical side of things, that don't have to call themselves an expert in science or an expert in mysticism or religion or whatever it might be. History, future tech, it doesn't matter. We need more people that are 
rooted and grounded in you're a human, I'm a human. You look different, I look different, but guess what? There's something beautiful in that diversity, and I'm going to get to that. But even people like Aubrey Marcus, Josh Trent from Wellness Force, these are people talking about editorial stuff, starting to get more into current affairs. Why? Because that is precisely where the medicine needs to be administered the most. Now, this is also why we need comedians. I love Dave Chappelle. I absolutely love him. And in his talk, in his, I would say, latest Netflix special, it was incredible. He started dropping certain things like, I got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Somebody came up to me at a restaurant without a mask on and started talking with a lot of H's, like, hi. And so he put his hand over his cup and he was like, mm-mm, not me. Okay. Tim Pool is probably going to say virtue signaling, and he's probably going to go off the rails about that. For me, yeah, it's kind of virtue signaling, but who cares? I talk about mystical stuff. That's virtue signaling. I open my mouth about anything I like, and that could be called virtue signaling. So let's not put Dave Chappelle down. I want to let you see just a tiny little snippet of his special. Every human being in this room, every human being on earth, had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on earth. That is a fact. He also sided with Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling by identifying as Team Turf, a term that means trans-exclusionary radical feminist, an ideology that excludes trans women as women. I'm Team Turf! Team Turf! Team Turf! Dave Chappelle is a great comedian. And he's always talked about the differences between whites and blacks and made jokes about them. In this one, as he's been battling with the LGBTQ community, why can't they see that we are one tribe and the only people I've ever had problems with are the whites? I find that hilarious. The only people Dave Chappelle has a problem with are the whites. You know, he sounds a lot like Malcolm X. Are many whites who are trying to solve the problem, but you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. Today, you could point to a large number of, of Negro leaders who have consistently betrayed Negroes in a whole host of areas. They aren't really Negro leaders. These are puppets that have been put in front of the Negro community by white liberals. These are parrots that have been put in front of the Negro community by white liberals. You can't name me a Negro leader who has been a Negro leader who has been betray, who has betrayed Negroes, who is not who has not been endorsed, sanctioned, uh, subsidized, and supported by the white liberals. Malcolm X said that anyone in the African American community that stands up at all for America and pretty much what he calls the white man's trap, white America, is a sellout. Somebody who's sold out their own people so they can fit into a system. And this is interesting because Dave Chappelle is starting to sound a lot like Malcolm X, but Dave Chappelle also in his very skit told a story about a slave who won his freedom and then his slave owner bought him a property. And on that property, that slave, ex-slave now, was a great farmer, and he started doing a lot of farming. What did he do to help out? He bought some slaves. Was that the white man propping him up? Is that the white man's trap? Or is that what incentive is? Because I think incentive is colorblind. I don't think incentive is racist. I think incentive is ego. Incentive is something that can make you sell out on your own morals and ethos. And really, this is exactly what the white societal archetype is coming to terms with right now. Dave Chappelle is a sign of the times. It's not going to go away. And you know, it's okay to laugh. It's all right. Not only does laughing disarm you and allow you to hear things that you wouldn't prefer to hear, but you hear it in a different way, you laugh, it disarms you, and you're like, nah, all right. It's very obvious that Dave Chappelle is, well, I don't know, supporting, if not promoting, the vaccine. The masks thing, fine. 
And I don't mind any of that because that's him. But did anyone see him a little bit more, let's say, groomed for office? Like he's going to run for some kind of party? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. But even the way he spoke was meticulous. Pretty interesting. What if Malcolm X and Osho had a baby? Malcolm X was a black supremacist, according to some, and a full-on militant black supremacist, according to others. He wished for the distinction between races, and I see the beauty in that. When the differences and the distinctions between every single race and all the different looks and ideas that can imprint themselves upon the look of who you are, when you make a distinction and you want to see it more, but you put it in its beautiful light, then we want to celebrate our differences, not something that we're warring against. Osho, amazing, very funny, sharp, great beard, had a few cars that I love to drive on Route 66, and you could tell he had some ideas that seemed radical but were really just logical to me. Now, if Malcolm X and Osho had a baby, who would that baby be? You might have guessed it. I think it's Martin Luther King Jr. Malcolm X had this philosophy, by any means necessary, we need to bring and raise up our black brethren. Okay, understood. But you also understand that by any means necessary is the colonial mindset. By any means necessary is really how white supremacy started in the first place. So I'm showing you the slippery slope Malcolm X, who cannot hear me anymore, or Dave Chappelle, who only I am making that parallel because I don't think Dave Chappelle is actually saying, he's never said anything close to, I want black supremacy. But the road that he is headed down is loaded with little tiny things that show he's grooming himself for office and his biggest problem are the whites. And that's what's been happening on the liberal side of things. On the conservative side of things, it's almost always been predominantly white. Not the entire way through, but it's almost always been predominantly white. Okay, does there need to be a leveling of the playing field? For sure. What would Osho, a spiritual leader, somebody who's conflicted, but a spiritual leader, human, bring to the table to Malcolm X? Maybe a little bit more of what MLK saw in his dream, which was equality, oneness. When all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty. We are all equal. There's nothing more supreme. Possibly even looking at the plants and the animals and all of nature, the rivers, our waters, these things are equal. They're also a part of us. Not better than us, because mind you, that's Agenda 21. The idea that rocks and waterways and nature are superior to us now because we've been so wrong to them and we've been polluting our atmosphere. Not me, not 99% of us. 1% of us have been destroying nature. And also the same 1% has been making that very same Agenda 21. But I digress. I know this all sounds like pseudoscience, this whole oneness thing, that we're all one. I think we can see our distinctions. We can understand that we are all different and we bring different gifts to the table. But at the table, we are all equal. No one deserves any more or less based upon the color of their skin or what they believe in or what they choose to do in their pursuit of happiness. Holy shit, that sounds like a document I once read. Now, this whole thing about oneness and the people thinking that it's just pseudoscience, there's no such thing. We're all separate, autonomous meat suits walking around and we should be treated as such. Well, I know those people also have not sat and meditated and had a mystical experience or they haven't done DMT with Max Egan. As somebody who has had both those experiences, I can tell you it's not bullshit. There is a fractal representation of everything in the universe inside me, inside you, inside all the people you love, inside all the people you hate, inside all the things that you don't know or don't even understand. 
the things that haven't come to be, all of that is in me. All of that is in you. The more we see that, yes, I am white, I'm 5'8", I am about 150 pounds, I like music, I live in Tennessee right now, there's a whole lot of specificity that goes along with me. However, inside of me, should I choose to conjure it, is everything in the universe, the best and the worst. This is why the way we speak to one another needs to be a lot more intelligent. If we're using mainstream media tactics to speak to one another with head tilts and disgust and all these kinds of facial expressions and tones of voice that most news anchors give when they're talking about the other, the dangerous other, then all you're going to get is more war. Even if you gently poke at an inflamed wound on the other side of some wall that you and society has built, you're still making problems worse. You're not making them any better. You're not administering medicine. So here's my call to action. Since I can't make Osho and Malcolm X have a baby, and even if they did, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be exactly Martin Luther King Jr., then here's what I have to say. We need more beautiful, beautiful humans. I don't care what you look like, what you believe in. We need more spiritually grounded people to take up the reins of talking about current affairs and grounding them, making them not seem like the end of the world, but the platform by which we begin to transform the entire world. This is not an affliction. Post-2020 world is not an affliction. If you're looking at it like that, you're perpetuating the issue. You at home are perpetuating the problem, blaming news and blaming everybody else. The more you blame, the more you see it as an affliction, the more you perpetuate the illness. And the illness, again, is not COVID, it's ignorance. Do not fall for that trap. You're much more beautiful than that. Go over to benjosephstewart.com, sign up for the deeper dives. You'll get access to all of the stuff that I'm not allowed to say here on YouTube and really just deeper dives into the topics that I talk about here. What I'm going to talk about over there are people like Dave Asprey, not Dave Chappelle, Dave Asprey. He's a biohacker. He opposes the mandates on the basis of being a biohacker. I want to dive into that as a potential way forward because if we are allowed to turn men into women and women into men, if we are allowed to become transhuman, not just transgender, meaning put brain machine interfaces in, swap body parts out, take the biology out, put technology in, if we're allowed to do that, then biohackers should be allowed to do anything they want with their bodies in the name of science. And maybe, maybe, if we in the United States could realize that this is the perfect platform, it's not a disaster, it's the perfect platform to create the most beautiful global example of how an inflamed and at war society can decide to come together, can decide to choose where and how its own freedoms come about, and to do so peacefully. Like Stuart Copeland and Sting in Police. Like Roger Waters and David Gilmore in Pink Floyd. Like all those amazing bands and groups that created something incredible that no one of them could have done alone. And even though there was discord between them, they still got the job done. That's beautiful. That's what we can do. That's what I'm aiming for. Because if we do that, imagine what the rest of the world would start doing with that as an example. Holy shit, the United States of America would actually stand for what all the propaganda has told us it stood for in the past. Freedom. Real independence and freedom and love and caring for our brothers and sisters. Go to the Discord chat. All these topics are talked about in the Discord chat and the information is below. I hope you guys enjoyed this show. Remember to smash that like button, comment below, share the video out. That's the best thing you can do. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll catch you guys next time on Awakening Infinity News.